They can shoot, they can score, but can they act? Move in, We'll take you to Tinseltown in the set of Billy Crystal's new movie to find out why the Suns are suiting up for a shot at stardom. The Valley's only prime time news with John Hook, Susan Taylor, and special correspondent Steve Kraft. From Channel 10 News, this is Arizona Prime. Good evening, I'm Susan Taylor. And I'm John Hook. Welcome to Arizona Prime. And there are stars in the NBA, but Sir Charles, KJ, and Thunder Dan shining on the big screen. A behind-the-scenes look as the Suns go Hollywood later on Arizona Prime. Welcome back. We're interested in this story. When he's not making movies, actor Billy Crystal is a big, big basketball fan. In his latest venture, Crystal gets the best of both worlds. He's starring and directing in a movie with many of his favorite NBA players. And Kathy Shockett followed some of the Phoenix Suns to Tinseltown for an exclusive, the only one in the country, behind-the-scenes look at their Hollywood debut. K.J. swings it out to Barkley at the top of the key. Thomwell sets a screen for Barkley, and Barkley hits a jumper at the buzzer. Wait a minute, Thomwell? And who's that high-fiving Barkley? The Suns uniform says Gifford. Actually, it's Mike McGee, a former player for the Suns, and this is not a real Phoenix Suns game. But it looks like the America West Arena, you say? That's good, because that's what the producers of Forget Paris want you to believe. The film stars Billy Crystal and Deborah Winger. Crystal also directs the movie and plays an NBA referee. The game in this scene will send the Suns to the finals. The score, 92-93, and Charles scores. But the ref calls the ball no good. Bringing in NBA players from several different teams to play themselves is a slam dunk. But it was the film's executive producer, Peter Schindler, who had to map out the game plan. Yeah, and I have to sit there and figure out, I got a preseason schedule and figure out which days I can rent a venue. And then once I have the venue, which players can come on days that they don't have a game before or a day after, and will they fly in, and will their coaches and their PR people. And then Jimmy Walker was, uh, was very helpful to me. and. Uh, I think once Jerry Colangelo came along and said yes, it really opened the door to the rest of the other teams being cooperative with us. Great. And how did you decide who plays themselves and who stands in as actors? You get the biggest stars you can. I'm a big basketball fan. I mean, it's thrilling. It's like, you know, one of the great things about working in the movie business is you get to live your fantasies. And extras who wanted to be a part of the fantasy poured into the L.A. sports arena and sat all day for free. We put ads in um, papers and we put posters up and... Uh, just, you know, said, come see Charles Barkley, uh, Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley, and uh, Paul Westfall work with Billy Crystal, and 10,000 people showed up. I got a big line. I'm just trying to stretch it. I got one line. You want to hear it? Yeah. He got it off! The three writers are Mr. Billy Crystal, Lowell Gans, and um, I'm Babalu Mandel. And it's a romantic comedy. It's not a basketball film, per se, right? It's a romantic comedy, but it's also about marriage, and it's much the way that we wrote Parenthood. We stole moments from our lives and put it on film. We've done the same thing with this. From the seats to the Phoenix police uniforms and actors that played press people, filmmakers turned the L.A. sports arena into the Purple Palace. This is the real Dan Marley. This is the real Kevin Johnson, but this is not the real Al McCoy. So are you the real coach, Paul Westfall? Am I the real coach? No, I'm an actor doing my impersonation. You're both today. That's right. What's this like? Well, it, it because of the crowd here, it seems a lot like a game. And uh, the only difference really is these players are listening to me a little better than our guys do and following directions better. They had to put makeup on me to make it look like I'm really coaching. But uh, you figure that out. They paying you well? They pay me real well. 
I'm not getting much, as paid as much as Billy Crystal, but we don't have as big as Raw. We're not going to have to carry the movie like Billy and his boys are, so they got the pressure. We just get to have fun. Fun, and by the end of the long day, there was a special camaraderie between Crystal, his crew, and the sons. And who else could get away with sitting in the director's chair but Sir Charles? Yes, that's a wrap for the sons for this movie anyway. I'd love to be in like a Godfather movie or another Spike Lee movie. Uh, there's a lot of possibility. Who knows? And who knows? Maybe we'll be seeing Kevin Johnson in City Slickers 3 if they make the sequel. Some of the players are donating the money they earn from the film to their favorite charity. And the movie is scheduled to open sometime this summer. Well, I'll look forward to that. And it's not completely on basketball, as you said. But, you know, those Phoenix Suns, they are hams. They're good actors. Were they nervous <laughs> at all? No, they weren't. And, of course, they wanted them in this to play themselves because they are showmen. That was part of it. They weren't nervous, and they told me that because they've played the L.A. Clippers before and they've been to the arena, and when they do, they're confident this was no different. And Paul Westfall did mention that he had never seen the arena look so good. You know, about that arena, you packed some 10,000 people in there. How in the world do they control them? And, and beyond that, it's interesting they didn't shoot it right here in Phoenix. Right, it is. Well, they were doing filming all week, but about controlling the crowd, John, it was incredible that they did because there were so many people. There, was a few, there were a few tense moments when uh, some people got out of hand and threw something and something hit Billy Crystal, but he grabbed the mic and set everybody straight, but that was it. Yeah, and I love the spray bottle perspiration. Yes. Did you like that? Now, when is it out again, Kathy? When does it come out? It'll be out sometime this summer. All right, Looking we'll forward look forward to it. To it. Those sons. <laughs> they need more exposure, don't they?